beautiful weirdos, it's Charlotte here and welcome back to Pretty Scary. Now if you're new here, please hit the red subscribe button down below for lots more of these kind of tutorials and to join the beautiful weirdo family. So if you consider yourself a beautiful weirdo, join us. And today I am doing an elegant zombie, bit of a strange juxtaposition. juxtaposition. I'm doing a collaboration with the lovely beauty type YouTube. She's a rather beautiful lady who I met on Instagram and we decided to do a collaboration and this was the idea we came up with because it's just odd. Just like us, all the best people are odd. So check her out. I've already filmed how to do the nice vintage waves so that tutorial will also be up. I will link it somewhere on this screen. Yep, yeah, without much further ado, I'm going to make a start on the elegant zombie. Stick on my 90s music. Actually being a bit of a bit of a disloyal 80s fan. So wipe the face off to get rid of any facial oils which will prevent your latex and cotton wool from sticking. And yes, we're going for the old faithful latex cotton wool and spatula. So just drawing out the design of where I want my zombie fleshy, nasty bits to go, and I end up making the one on my head look like a map of Britain, or something rude, whichever you prefer. I'm going for a map of Britain, because I'm an innocent girl. Right, so just taking a little wisp of cotton wool and using a little bit of latex to stick that on, and then using some more latex to smooth the shape and create that nose bone effect. You've seen me do this latex and cotton wool several times before, so you know the drill, girls and boys and just using baby wipes there to clean my hands in between these are very very useful while you're doing anything to do with latex because you can just clean that latex right off without having to run back and forth to the sink so i'm just creating the flap around that nose piece like i say just put on some latex and then stick the cotton wool down and then using either your fingers or a cotton bud saturate that cotton wool in latex and then use your fingers and the spatula just to shape the cotton wool to the desired shapes. Now it takes a while to dry so you've got some time to fiddle around with this and get the shape that you want and then you can either wait for it to dry or you can dry it with a hair dryer just to speed things up a little bit. If you don't have a spatula at a pinch you can use a rounded dinner knife Make sure it is a rounded dinner knife and not a sharp knife for obvious reasons. So just repeating that over the rest of the face, creating the edges of the zombie wounds with the latex like I've just explained and then just creating some texture within those by putting a thin layer of latex and then just sticking little wisps of cotton wool to create the texture. And if your elegant zombie is going to be mourning her lost love in a low-cut dress, don't forget to add some zombie patches to your body as well. This is a long ass tutorial, so I have sped some bits up for your convenience. To colour this makeup, we're using water-based face paints in this tutorial. Now, you can use alcohol paints, but they are very expensive. And just taking a dark red and a purple, a small brush to mix the two colours on the back of your hand and then a textured natural sponge and you just want to stipple the colour over your skin. Now it does look a little bit odd but this is coming back to what I was saying at the beginning of this tutorial that the key to this look is all in the colouring and it's using a layering technique to give the look depth and realism. So basically the, the idea is you start off with the darker colours and you gradually layer up the colours so that you get that depth of colour and different colours going on that you would normally get in a normal skin tone because your skin is not one flat colour. Next take a bright red and a black and mix those together to paint inside of the zombie rotten wound areas because you want these to be darker than the actual skin surrounding it. 
paint these on with that small brush that you saw me using earlier and then just mute them out with the sponge so basically just dab the damp sponge over the top to mute out the colors and make them look more subtle and more blended with the rest of the skin this is quite key to make it look natural now taking a bright red and a black and painting around the edge of the wound using exactly the same technique you've just seen and then take the black and just paint in that nose area because this is where the nose is rotted away and you've just got the skull left. And then using a yellow mixed with a white to paint the bone area. I did have a little bit of trouble with the colour of this bone area because it just ended up looking too bright so I do work over it with some darker colours later on. And then just use those, that mixture of red and black around the wound and building up in the deeper areas of the wound and the sort of rotten areas just to make it look really nasty and give it loads of depth. What I was going for in this tutorial was quite a sort of fresh rotten look, which is a bit of a contradiction in terms I know. Um, but basically um, not too decayed. So you do see some zombies that are really sort of rotten and brown and falling apart and dried out. This is more of a fresh zombie, shall we say. Box fresh zombie. So basically what you want to do is just keep building up the shades in the rotten areas and in the bone areas and also around the eyes, anywhere where you want to give a little bit of depth of colour. You can use, if you've got the stomach for it, you can use some reference pictures of decaying bodies. I do have the stomach for it, so I did, but if you haven't, then you can just kind of play around with it and see what you like, or just use mine as reference. But you tend to get the sort of darker colours around the mouth, the eyes, the edges of the face, that kind of thing. What I also wanted to do with this one as well, because she is an elegant zombie, I wanted to kind of give the effect of makeup almost. So I used the darker shades to my advantage to give almost the look of a smoky eye. And then later on you'll also see me painting in some eyebrows and around the lips. So just painting around the hairline to make sure you don't get that white patch from where the skin stops and where the hairline starts, which is a dead giveaway for these kind of makeup looks. Um, and then just working over the skin with some of those extra dark tones to give some more depth. And then taking some light foundation and some white water activated face paint, mixing those together with a lot of water and then using that natural sponge again just to stipple over the top. Now this will basically knock those dark colours back and give the impression that those dark colours are underneath the skin. So you're getting that depth that I was talking about earlier where there's sort of different layers rather than just one completely flat look and this will really help to give a more professional, more realistic look to your makeup rather than just painting it one flat colour. Once you've done that you can start working back over with some darker tones back in to give some more sort of dark depth to that look. This really is just all about layering so just keep layering until you're happy with darker tones, lighter tones, make sure it's not looking too symmetrical and there's no areas that are too opaque. Now you can see me mixing over some yellow colours just to add a bit more rotten flesh look and then going back into that nose bit that I was talking about earlier just to make the, the bones look a little bit deeper. Once you're happy with the water-based shades, you can add even more depth by going back in with some grease paints. Grease over water-based paints does give a lot more depth because there's only so much depth you can get with the water-based. And I'm just going in with a dark red and black just to give some more depth to those wound areas and also some more depth to the eyes. So green, grey, flesh tone, white, black and yellow grease paints. Mix them all together and just sort of sponge over any areas where you feel you need a little bit of extra either light or depth or what have you. Like I said, this is just all about building up the depth of colour to give that horrible, nasty kind of marble decayed flesh look. Beautiful.
finally give the whole look a low translucent powder just to set that grease paint. I then took some dark eyeshadow and created a zombie tear because she is mourning her lost love, don't forget. In the intro you saw me stick a needle in my zombified hand and produce blood. This isn't actually part of the makeup but I just wanted to show you how I did it. I created a small bladder as they're known in the special effects industry out of latex, filled it with blood, stuck it to my hand with some latex and cotton wool and then just dried that out and coloured the area so it all blended in. If you would like to know more about bladders then please comment below and I can do a separate video on this if you would like. And I will see, oh, I just realised I've not done my teeth. Bollocks. Take some Kryolan black tooth enamel, shake it all around, dry your teeth out, paint it on. Quickly finished elegant zombie look. And she is wearing her evening dress and mourning her lost love. Quite frankly, with teeth like this, I'm not surprised she's lost her love. But, you know, beauty fades and love never dies. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Please comment down below and let me know what kind of zombie you would be if you were a zombie. Zombies have infinite possibilities and I believe that we've all got a zombie personality somewhere inside of us. So let me know in the comments down below what kind of zombie you would be. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. <laughs>